Good morning, viewers. Tim Zapp here with Browski Race for day number two at PRI. I'm sitting alongside Joe McCall. We're going to talk a little bit about uh, what we're going to bring to the table for 2024 and all new or existing customers. Joe, why don't you take it away? Okay. Yeah, well, I think for this year, uh, what's going to be a little different is we've broadened our scope. Uh, we had really been focused uh, uh, up until COVID hit on doing LSs pretty much exclusively. And when we mean doing, we mean we have inventory of the parts from top to bottom, from you know our daily driver type 700 horse engines up through uh, billet LSs such as uh, Marcus's over here. Uh, but uh, due to you know, basically changing business environment, parts availability, uh, our ability to start bringing in new people, we've expanded our scope. Mm -hmm. And so now, for instance, we're doing big blocks, meaning we have big block inventory. Yep. Uh, but big blocks are a different animal than, uh, yep. than LSs. And uh, uh, we've always done a range of power adders, uh, but then when you start adding two different foundations and then a host of power adders, how do you choose? Yeah, I guess it's uh, difficult for some. Yeah, obviously, externally, big block Chevrolet over an LS is dimensionally different. Uh, but most importantly, I think the the way the power comes in in a big block, uh, a lot of people um, you like. You know, it, it makes a lot of power down low, uh, and it's not very high in RPM. It's not a screaming engine, uh, so that could help people decide uh, between the two. Yeah, well, like in general, if you're looking at a, uh, a big block, uh, you don't have to have any RPM at all to hit big torque. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, so everybody usually thinks of what's the horsepower? Well, it's, you can get, you, they can both, an LS and a, uh, and a big block can both get to the same peak horsepower but how they got there with torque is a whole different animal. Mm. And uh, so with the big block, if you want to, from a traffic light, just stomp on the gas and lay down a cloud of smoke, that's, big block is kind of ideal for that. That's yeah. its sweet spot. Yeah, absolutely. Where the LS had kind of come in slow, maybe not burn the tires off immediately, could eventually get there and eventually go with you know, similar speeds, but uh, yeah, it's not the tire frying torque that a lot of people want. Right. Yeah. So then, I guess the you know the other advantages, disadvantages are weight and uh, cooling. Yeah. Because uh, yeah, uh, I think with the big blocks, you know, the problem is not only is there a, a large mass of iron that you mm -hmm. have to keep cool. The other thing is you've really reduced the space you have under the hood for airflow. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, radiator and whatnot. Yeah, the footprint is quite uh, different. Um, I guess we could also talk about two the different types of power adders that we'll offer in all platforms. Exactly. Yeah, and they have very different behaviors as well. You know, the three kind of standard types that we work with are the turbos, and actually both of the cars here today are are twin turbos. Mm -hmm. uh, the and then looking over at the superchargers, and there are two basic types: the uh, twin screw and the centrifugal. And each one of those threes, again, will get you to a similar place, but in a very different way. Yeah, yeah. So the turbo stuff, obviously, we could, <clears throat> you know, make a boost curve that, uh, you know, would bring it in slow or fast, uh, where the superchargers are are kind of stationary, right? Yeah, the twin screw stuff comes in abruptly, stays relatively flat, and maintains that boost until peak RPM, where the centrifugal will kind of come in very soft and then continue right. to build boost as very RPM increases. Very linear torque curve. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, so if, uh, uh, I think another added uh, uh, just twist to the, to the story is with the Whipples, the internal bypass, and yeah. how it works with cruising versus when you stomp on the gas. Yeah, so the internal bypass just, I guess, essentially allows the engine to um, cruise as it would naturally aspirated, um, maintaining appropriate fuel mileage, uh, you know, cruising around. It's, it's an NA car. Yeah, right? it's essentially naturally aspirated, and then as soon as you put your foot to the ground, yeah, the bypass closes, you, you have your boost and you're yeah, destroying tires. Right, yeah. Now, 
I've got a lot of real time behind one of those mm -hmm. uh, that was drive by cable, so no computers fixing my stuff. And uh, I can assure you that uh, you know, the acceleration when you when that bypass slap shot was explosive. Yeah. But the problem is with street tires, if you think you can on drive by cable stomp on the gas and keep that car going straight. Yeah, you're mistaken. Not, not happening. Yeah, you're mistaken, absolutely. There's uh um, a lot of power, and I think that's why we are trying to offer so many different uh, uh, power adder options. Yeah, naturally aspirated, turbocharged, supercharged, screw supercharged, or centrifugally supercharged um, to kind of yeah get the customer exactly what they want. Right, for whatever their intended end-use application is, and mm -hmm. for whatever they like. If you like an LS, that's what you ought to have. If you like a big block, that's what you ought to have. Yeah. Uh, but then, what's your driving style? And for instance, David Ankin, who'll be here tomorrow, uh, built a drift car. Well, drift car, you want very precise throttle control, and you, we built him a gear-driven Pro Charger, which yep. was perfectly linear. Yeah, from top to bottom. And I guess the other uh, main thing to maybe relay to the people viewing is that all of these combinations, we have parts ready to assemble today. Right. You order now, we're making it. Right. Um, which is important. A lot of people, I think, uh, our customers anyways, are very leery of uh, purchasing because a lot of people will kind of run them around. Uh, yeah, they will get right. this. Well, well, frankly, we've been run around by our parts suppliers. Yeah, no, absolutely. <laughs> so, and, and, yeah, we like building things that we know we can actually build. And so that is kind of a lead in to, well, what other things have we been doing besides the LS with various power adders? Mm -hmm. Uh, and uh, so, for instance, the Ford. Uh, yeah, we've done a, a few small block Fords, uh, a lot of really neat ones. Yeah, some uh, uh, individually throttle bodied small block Fords going in Ford GTs, and and uh, I guess yeah, we could build you know I guess anything for the big three. We'll call it right. Uh, exactly. Yeah. Ford, so, Chevrolet, Mopar. Um, yeah, so our thing is that if you want a custom American V8 engine of you know, in the standard, like popular, yeah, foundations or platforms, you know, we'll do that uh, uh, as a as a totally custom build, assuming we can get parts, mm -hmm. because you know you don't want to wait a year for the engine, and we don't want to wait a year. For yeah, the we don't want. Yeah, we don't want to hang on to it for. Yeah, a year. so that's that's not our thing, and. Uh, you know, we we like to if we know we can get the parts and we know we can make something that uh, you know the customer would be happy with. You know, then we'll look and see if that's a feasible solution. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think you know, uh, rolling into we've been doing a lot of the billet work, uh, both yeah. uh, small block Ford LS LT. So maybe you could run through what uh, you know uh, on the ones that, for instance, we stock. Mm -hmm. uh, on the LS, we'll start with them. Yeah, so we have uh, a pretty good inventory on billet LSs, uh, blocks, crankshafts, connecting rods, pistons, cylinder heads, um, pretty much anything you need to, you know, make a combination for, you know, the customer um, in stock, ready to assemble. Um, and, yeah, I mean, Marcus, uh, a few other customers have these engines. They are having excellent luck with them uh, in competition. Um, yeah, I guess we just... Well, uh, just the fact that this engine over here is, uh, what, five, six years old? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, it's it's quite old. Right, and uh, still uh, kicking out 4,000 horse. Yeah, so, yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, so, you know, we look to build combinations and do all the machining so that they not only perform, but they survive. And plus, I think they really look good. Yeah, yeah, they do look good. Uh, a lot of people ad admire how uh, shiny they are. Uh, yeah, so... Uh, uh, but uh, yeah, the, and let's roll into the LTs. Uh, mm -hmm. There, I guess you've uh, had your hands on a number of those this year. Yeah, yeah, quite a lot of LTs. Some billets, some just traditional LT platforms. Uh, and yeah, we enjoy doing those. I think you know they're very similar to the LS uh, engines that we already do, so we can apply the same knowledge and procedures to them uh, and supply engines that last and, and and don't puke oil out yeah and then uh, yesterday uh bill divine was here mm -hmm. and he was uh did a facebook live uh talking about his uh billet small block ford yeah 
that uh, Marcus, who's on the other side of the camera at the moment, uh, told them, you know, you're having too many problems with your engine. Yeah. Just take it to Borowski and let them fix it for you. And yeah. You, uh, tell them how, uh, you know, after you looked at it, what you told them. Yeah, well, I essentially told Bill, as you know, looking at what he had and um, what, yeah, what he had given us, and it was just um, not to our standard. I think, uh, you know, we fixed a lot of issues that that were looked past, and yeah, I told him there's at least 500 horsepower on the table, and I think, you know, him going to Fuel Tech after we rebuilt the engine uh, proved that. Uh, yeah, he was able to pick up. A bunch of horsepower. The car is staying together. Um, he's not filling catch cans, and it's really filling catch cans. Right? Yeah, yeah. It, it, it was at one point filling uh, his puke tank almost completely full, and now, yeah, there's minimal oil collection there, uh, which is good. That says a lot about what we're doing to the cylinder finish. Where are you uh, located? I'm sorry. Joliet, Illinois. Yep. Um, and that says a lot about what you know we have for cylinder finish ring packages and. And the quality of the machining, but uh, um, yeah, that's the Ford, right? And uh, but I, I guess that was for him a blessing and kind of in a, a little way uh, uh, an issue for him mm -hmm. because it was a totally different car. Yeah, you know, he's had this car for what almost twenty years now. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. He's been and, racing it for twenty years and twenty years of data. Uh, I guess this year essentially proved him wrong. Um, because he had to essentially restart his entire program. Uh, it, power management changed a bunch. Uh, clutch <laughs> clutch uh, data changed a bunch. There was a lot of things that he had to... Uh, suspension was another yeah, one. Yeah, suspension. A, a lot of things that he had to tune and, and get, uh, get squared back away before he could make some successful uh, passes. And now, yeah, he's well on his way. Right. Yeah. So, uh, and I think uh, you know, you mentioned fuel tech. That has been another change that we have made this mm -hmm. year, because what we could see, well, first, uh, you know, uh, problems with ECU availability with our other suppliers, and fuel tech it really provides a great option. And it was Bill who said, y "You guys really need to talk to fuel tech." Yeah. Yeah. And we did. Uh, yeah. I took a trip down to. Uh, uh, their facility in Georgia, met with them, and uh, yeah, actually they're going to be up next week at our shop in Joliet uh, for a training session yeah, on, on their training. stuff, uh, getting all of our staff uh, fully acquainted and up to speed on uh, you know, how to tune with their with the fuel tech systems. And uh, yeah, we really like their product. You know, maybe you could talk about like where we're using it and why we like uh, yeah, so we've been using it in a number of applications. Uh, what we like most, yeah, is obviously availability uh, and support. Support's a huge thing. If there are any issues, they're just a phone call away and they always answer. Um, but yeah, uh, in the airboat world, uh, race car world, we've used them across the board. Uh, I think a lot of the customers like the fact that they're... Um, you know, the ECU and dash is all integrated. It's one piece. Right, yeah. You're uh, not buying two pieces. You don't get the ECU and then have to buy a dash. It's one yeah, piece. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's one piece. And then uh, ease of installation, it's, it's there. And then uh, they have a lot of literature on how the install is supposed to happen. And uh, that guides customers, uh, you know, a lot better than other. Right, other you mentioned airboats and... Uh, the uh, fuel tech systems. Well, this display, you can drop in a bucket of water. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I think they. I don't know what the certification is. IP I think sixty seven. Yeah. Um, so, but yeah, it's uh, waterproof or water resistant. Right. Yeah. And then I think uh, you know, looking at kind of what I call consumer grade uh, products. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, not mentioning any names, but consumer grade wiring harnesses compared to a fuel tech wiring harness? Uh, yeah, so obviously the loom is uh, much nicer than the other harnesses on the market. Uh, they give you appropriate length, so you're not having to modify the harness in any way. Uh, you know, whatever extra length you do have, you coil up, you know, stuff under the dash or however you mount uh, the ECU. Um, but yeah, I, I like the quality and uh, it's been working out for us. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, uh, Marcus, uh, do you see any uh, questions coming in from uh, from the audience? Okay. No. Uh, if you have any, uh, you know, before we head out, uh, Marcus, could you just scan the two vehicles? Just, 
take around nice and slow. Yeah, I guess uh, the next interview coming up today is with uh, Bob Williams of uh, All Pro. So what time? He's at eleven thirty. Okay. Well, and, hopefully uh, the people watching now or watching this later can tune in for that and listen to Joe and Bob talk a little bit about cylinder heads. Right. Yeah, because uh, actually both of these vehicles are equipped with all pro heads. Yeah. Th these are solid heads, no water. You know, this, on the other hand, the Bonneville car uh, yeah, does need to keep cool. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, well, okay. thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, we look forward to seeing you at 1130 with uh, Bob Williams and Joe McCall. Thank you.